Young Mike Bell, our Falcons are wasting no time. As I said, they shouldn't. Right. Go to work. We need to spend some of this money, Atlanta. We need to improve our football team. And Mike, with the moves that have been made so far, how are you feeling? Because we got to fill people in on what's happened. Yeah, I, I saw the you – know, look, I was banging on uh, Javon Hargrave. Uh, you got Jerron Payne got signed by the commanders on a really good deal for that team. And then Hargrave signs a deal, which I didn't think breaks the bank for the 49ers, if I'm honest. I really would have liked to have been in the, in the business with him, but perhaps – He's a better fit for what they're doing out there. But uh, Anya Mata's a guy we did tell you about. We did prepare the ground, right, for potential Saints coming over here. And there's a guy that, as Bobby Bear told us a few weeks ago, was developed under Ryan Nielsen and is, is kind of an upgrade over Taquan Graham. And, again, he'll be in the rotation and other guys we've got. Yeah, I – and, by the way, we take care of Chris Lindstrom. That was a no-brainer, okay? I mean, mm-hmm. if you wanted to take care of your best offensive lineman, lock him up in his prime years, it only makes sense that you take care of Lindstrom. The smartest thing the Falcons have done, believe it or not, is not franchise tag Caleb McGarry. I mean, when you think about it, right, and you say, well, how do you like all of these moves, Dukes and Bell? I like them. I, I like the, the addition of, of Jonu Smith. I like the addition of, of David Ayamada. I, I think signing Lindstrom to a long-term deal helps you feel good about where this offensive line is going to go. And at some point, Jake Matthews is going to call it quits. I'm not telling him to now, Mike, but he's been doing this for over a decade now. He's still very good. But now you've got the next guy in line to lead this offensive line, and he's right. the best player at his position. So they reset the market with the guard, the guard uh, numbers mm-hmm. that they put out there as, you know, as far as uh, Lindstrom's contract. But not doing that with Caleb McGarry was a smart play because, again, I think the, the part of this, Mike, is you're going to overpay in free agency, but if you're going to do it, do it with the right guys. Right, and with Lindstrom, guys, he's a proven piece. And uh, i got to be honest, it's very similar to the Quentin Nelson deal that he got in Indiana. Uh, at Indianapolis, I should say, with just one more year. So it's basically the same salary, but with more term. So that's the deal there. Wait and see. McGarry can still sign here, guys. He may get no traction any, anywhere else. Um, Brown from the Chiefs is going to reset the tackle market. Uh, we'll get into all the other moves that are going on right now. But it's, it's a combination of needs and look, Lindstrom was a guy we didn't spend too much time talking about because I just assumed he would get this. We just assumed you draft a guy, and that's one of the, the ones that Dimitrov got right. You can't argue with it. He was a plug-and-play guy. He's a solid piece. And with the exception of the Carolina game, who's uh, Derek Brown just has his way with him. That's just one of those mismatches. But he's one of those guys you don't worry about on this team. I totally agree. I uh, want to know what you guys think. How are you feeling about where this team is spending its money? Right now, I feel pretty good. And again, we're not done. I still think that there's a chance, Mike, we could still sign a a bigger splash player, maybe a Jesse Bates, maybe somebody else that we've talked about because, again, I think that some of our needs are going to have to be addressed in free agency. And then we'll get to the draft, and then we can worry about the draft. But right now, with free agency officially beginning on Wednesday – it's about getting deals done and, and acquiring players, whether via trade mm. or you're just going to go pay a guy in free agency to improve your team. I think right now, Arthur Smith and, uh, and Terry Fontenot, they're doing a pretty good job. Where else, where else are they going to go? I don't know. We said this. I have no idea, Mike. And again, we've talked about 4 3, 3 4, but Hargrave is just a beast. And I just, I, I mean, you know me, I, you and I probably spent more, I think we spent more time on him the last week than any other free agent uh, that we mentioned. But it was an $84 million deal with just $40 million guaranteed to the 49ers. Uh, that's just to me, it was one I thought could make everything instantly better. But people go with guys they've worked with, and that's cool. And Anyamata is no slouch. He will be an upgrade to what we've used in the past. And then, you know, you mentioned uh, the tight end. Uh, you know, bring in a guy that, in John o. Smith who has familiarity with Arthur Smith in Tennessee and is also a guy that can block and catch the football. Yeah. I, Especially because Pitts is more of the hybrid, and then you can move Pitts all over the place like Tony Gonzalez was more of a, you know, that hybrid than actually tight end, tight end. What I think, and we'll get Arthur Smith's opinion on this soon enough, but I think when you go get a guy like this, think about our red zone offense. And think about how Arthur Smith has continued to say over the last two years, we've got to score more points. As a matter of fact, we have him saying mm-hmm. to us, we have to score more points. You're in the red zone. And now, formation-wise, guys, you've got London, Pitts, Smith, Algier, who you've seen now catch the ball out of the backfield, CP. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden now, you've got a variety of combinations that you can use. Somebody's going to get open. Somebody's going to be open. And we know Arthur has schemed very well. 
So now I just need to be able to rely on guys to get the job done. I think our red zone offense with the addition of Johnny Smith, Mike, helps us. He was great in Tennessee. He was not great with the Patriots. That's fine. It doesn't mean he won't be here. Mm. I just think it's about how they're going to use him. And more importantly, red zone offense is how I see it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we need to score more points. Thank you, Arthur. And as you said, eight touchdowns his last year working with Arthur Smith in Nashville. And the Patriots offense has been a disaster ever since they lost. I mean, it just even with Josh McDaniel the first year, just not the same unit. And Mac Jones is struggling up there. And I'd probably get a lot better this year Bill O'Brien. That's a them problem. But now what's next? Still, if we're honest, Falcon fans are probably looking around because we know guys, and it's not a knock, just folks want the splashy stuff. They want the skilled positions. Well, this was a year we have to build the trenches. We've got to get the trenches, right? So I would imagine the average Falcon fan based on what I saw on social media, eh, they're kind of like, eh, because it's not the stuff that people get that excited about. Yeah, and I get it. Uh, Listen, I said I wanted them to make a splash day one. Um, this is a different kind of splash. To be honest with you guys, this is a smart splash. This isn't a, I'm just going to go blow my wad on everything, Mike, on one guy and pay him the world, and then, oh, we're done. The Hargrave deal, to Mike's point, four years, $84 million, not overwhelming. That's not like, oh, my God, we couldn't have done that. But this is a smart splash, and I'm going to give him credit right now for doing this, uh, what I think, Mike, is the right way. Now, what else are they going to do? Because we can't be done, and I don't think we should be, as you continue to add pieces. But you took care of one of your own. You went out and made a trade. And then you went and signed a guy who was a free agent who one of our coaches and, and you know, maybe even Terry Fontenot obviously has familiarity with. And to put it plain and simple, guys, David Onyemata was better than Marcus Davenport. He has been. And I think that's one of the reasons why, if you had to choose, they're both out there. You could have easily offered a contract to Marcus Davenport. He's been better. If you ask Ryan Nielsen, turn on the tape. Look at what he's done. Look at the pressure that he's created up the middle. He's been a better player. 6'4", 300 pounds next to Grady. So, as we said, you know, Taquan Graham is one of the guys that has done well. But we just – we need more bodies. Everybody who went to the Super Bowl or deep in the playoffs has got rotations, Carl, on the mm. defensive line. We have not had that. So, there's the – now, here's the thing. Do you want to address corner or safety through free agency? Some would say Bates is a luxury item when you got so many other things you got to get. But he is a name that the fans recognize. Got to spend this money somehow. I mean, you got to get there at some point. Are we going to address the other guard position? What are we going to do at left guard? Is that still going to be reserved for in the draft? And right tackle, obviously replacing McGarry. Good news is we're we're making some moves. Um, it's just I got to be honest with you. When I look around the league and I see some of the contracts, Hargrave is disappointed. I realize maybe just again he was never ever ever on their radar. It was just something you and I projected because he was the best available DT. But the other things out there, Garoppolo going to the Raiders. I'm like, you went from Derek Carr to a. <laughs> it's like Derek Carr light who can't stay healthy. If you're honest. So you like Lord, you don't like that move? No, I, I think Gar- Garoppolo to me is yesterday's news. I, I I would have I look at him as a journeyman now, and I think this will be a big nothing in Las Vegas. 